Hello everyone, welcome to session one of LTech 620 Visual Design. In this video, we're going to introduce the course, and we'll do this by providing a high-level overview of the course content and learning objectives. And then we'll review a few basic aspects of the course structure and some other important information to help everyone get started. What is LTech 620 all about? Well, as the name suggests, it's a course about visual design and we can ease our way into understanding what that actually means by examining what each of those words, visual and design, actually stands for. Of course, the word visual suggests a reference to sight. It means something is visual or visible. It is perceivable by the eye. The word design, on the other hand, is a bit more complicated. It's a noun and a verb, and it can mean an action, an industry, or a product. In this class, we'll be engaging in the process of design, the action, and as a result, we'll be producing designed visual artifacts or products. A critical part of the concept of design is the notion that objects can be designed so that they function according to intentions. This concept of functioning according to intentions is quite important. It's the idea that anything that is designed should have intention behind it. And of course, in our day-to-day -day lives, we have encountered things that are well-designed, designed with intention, and things that are poorly designed. This idea of designing with intention should prompt us to step back and situate a course on visual design within our broader context. In fact, we should ask ourselves, what is the context in which we are studying visual design? Well, in LTEC 620, we are not studying visual design in a school of arts or a college of design. Instead, we're studying visual design in a college of education. So what does that tell us? Well, it should remind us that we should be thinking about the functions and intentions of visual design through the lens of teaching and learning. In fact, here are two guiding questions that can help us make the connection between visual design and education. The first question asks, how do people learn from visual representations? And the second question asks, how can we design visual representations that support learning? In order to prepare ourselves to adequately address these questions, we're going to need to draw on more than just one field of study. So we're also going to pull on a related yet distinct field known as visual literacy. Simply put, visual literacy is the ability to interpret, use, and create visual media in ways that advance thinking, decision-making, communication, and learning. Now take a look at those verbs, interpret, use, create. That's what we'll be spending most of our time doing and studying this semester. In fact, in LTEC 620, we'll be hanging out at the intersection of visual design and visual literacy, constantly returning to those overarching questions about the role of visual representations in teaching and learning. So, now that we know where we are, the next natural question is, what are we going to do? In other words, how are we going to make sure that we're learning enough to answer those overarching questions? This brings us to the course objectives. Our first learning objective states that we will analyze and evaluate visual representations from different perspectives. If we look at this objective and relate it to Bloom's taxonomy, shown here on the right, we'll notice that we're focusing on analysis and evaluation. Some of the topics we'll be covering include learning about different taxonomies of visual representations, what are all the different types of visual representations that are out there, for example, what's the difference between symbolic and iconic representations, in terms of different perspectives, we're going to learn that we can analyze visual representations from functional, cognitive, administrative, and aesthetic perspectives. And finally, we'll learn a little bit about different strategies that we can use to help us analyze and evaluate various types of representations. Now, let's take a look at an example of all of this. Here are three visual representations of Bloom's taxonomy. You'll notice that the content of each of these representations is more or less the same. However, the structure or the layout of that content, visually speaking, is quite different. 
So, a question I'd like you to consider is, how might these visual representations differ in terms of their meaning? In other words, if you were to give these representations to people, what do you think they would learn about Bloom's taxonomy? And does the visual representation of this information change what people might take away from each design? Our second learning objective states that we're going to create visual representations using graphic design elements, principles, and processes. Notice the emphasis on the create aspect of Bloom's taxonomy. Some of the content we're going to bring to the table related to this objective is learning to use design software and tools. We're also going to learn about different design elements such as line, shape, and texture different design principles such as contrast and repetition, and of course, we'll spend a considerable amount of time learning about the process of design and how to iterate and move through a design project from beginning to end. Now, here's another example. On this slide, we're seeing two different visual designs for a high school chemistry simulation. My question for you is to think about which one you think supports learners more effectively. And of course, why? We won't get into all of the details right now, but I can tell you that the answer to which one of these visual designs supports learners more effectively is not as simple as you might think. This brings us to our third learning objective, which states that we're going to analyze and evaluate the role of visual representations and visual literacy in education, both formal and informal and across settings. Again, there are two verbs within Bloom's taxonomy, evaluate and analyze. And in terms of content, we're going to take a look at standards of visual literacy. We'll also do some reading about visual thinking and reasoning. And we'll talk a little bit about critical perspectives and critical viewing. And throughout all of this, we'll make references to other types of literacies, such as data literacy, information literacy, and multimedia literacy. For a final example, here are three visual representations common in today's visual culture. And as you look at these, my question for you is, again, within the context of education, how are altered images, animated GIFs, and emoji enhancing or hindering student learning? At a minimum, we have to say that these types of visual representations are changing our approach to teaching and learning. And as a result, one of our responsibilities is to understand how we can support learners in a world that's this visual. Okay, so that kind of gives you a brief overview of the course itself. Now let's take a look at some of the basics of the class. The first thing that I want you to take note of is the overview module in Canvas. There's a couple of important links and documents here that I want to walk through. First and foremost, we have a link to the course syllabus, which is a Google Doc that you can view. I encourage everyone in the first week to take a close look at this and to let me know if you have any questions or if anything is unclear. The second link is to the office hour sign-up sheet. And those of you who have worked with me before know that this is an editable Google document that allows you to sign up for a 20-minute time slot. Typically, office hours will be held on Monday evenings from 5 to 6 p.m. Hawaiian time. To sign up, just follow the link and write down your name. If for some reason the available times don't work for you, just shoot me an email and we'll make alternative arrangements. The third link is to my Zoom room, and that's the virtual space we'll use for office hours and for any other types of meetings we have in this class. So just click that link to be taken directly to my Zoom room. Now, let's talk a little bit about design software. This semester, we're going to be using a graphics editing program called Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is a beautiful piece of software that works on three platforms, Mac OS, Windows, and iOS. Now, because it is a professional grade product, it's not free. However, purchasing Affinity Designer is optional because the company that makes it actually has a 90-day full-featured trial, which is linked to in the syllabus. So you're welcome to use the free trial for this course. That said, if you're interested, there's currently a 50% off sale on Affinity Designer, and I think that's good through June 20th. So that's really up to you. Now, you don't have to use Affinity Designer. If you already have a graphics editing program that you know and love, then you can use that. That's okay. But just keep in mind that all of the course tutorials and hands-on components will assume you're working with Affinity Designer. Now, a second piece of software that we'll be using is Miro. 
Miro is a flexible whiteboarding program that we'll use this semester to facilitate sharing our design work in research related to visual design. We'll be sharing more details about Miro in the days ahead, but I just wanted you to be aware that this is another tool that we'll be using in the class. Okay, enough about software. I want to end by focusing on the course calendar. You probably know already that this is a six-week semester, so the course is broken into six sessions as shown here. Because we're compressing a full 15-week semester into six weeks, this course is going to be pretty intense. For that reason, I ask that you keep up with the class and monitor your own understanding, and please reach out if or when you need help with anything that we're talking about. Now, each weekly session will begin on Tuesday morning, usually by 9 or 10 a.m. Each session will end on Monday night, and each week you'll re be responsible for viewing the course video presentation. Note that there may be more than one video, completing the readings, and submitting the assignments. Importantly, there will be multiple assignments due in a single session, so watch those due dates. My suggestion is that you log into Canvas as soon as you can each Tuesday to figure out what is due when for that particular week. This will help you plan ahead and stay in sync with the rest of the class. Okay, everyone, that's all for today. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in Canvas.